I don't know how many of you have heard of the FIRE movement. Some of you are going, whoa, where is this going? What does this have to do with money? Well, that's an acronym, George. It stands for Financially Independent Retired Early. And uh, you know about all these things. Oh, yeah. You're Mr. Financial Trend. Nothing gets over on you. you I've know read about the blogs. I've seen the tweets. You've seen it all. And so this is a movement where people essentially work themselves to almost exhaustion and beyond. And the idea is in their 20s and 30s, they're working like crazy, socking everything away, saving, living on way less than they make, something that we obviously love, but they have no life. And the idea is, is that they never work again, which is counterintuitive to what I believe to be true, what we at Ramsey Solutions believe, that you were created to work, mm. uh, to contribute, if you will. And uh, so uh, this is a headline here I've got in my hands. This is a, uh, make sure I, oh, this is a finance uh, Yahoo article there. The team hates when I do that. Guys, it's just an old paper tactic. It's going to be okay. It's all right. They get so alarmed. Nobody by wants that. to hear the paper. I think they do. I do it on my show all the time. The Pull people the love it. Do you guys uh, like the paper crinkle out there? It's it's overwhelming in the lobby. The lobby so, guests are lying. Oh, Zach likes that one. Okay, very good. All right. So here's a story in my hands here uh, of a couple uh, that is now, well, shall we say, regretting this decision. Ooh. They retired early, George, with $4.3 million. But now, this is their quote, we don't want to just keep throwing money on the pile and being cheap. So they want to live, but they're, they're afraid to spend. And uh, so this is a scarcity mentality that the, 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 the man says in the couple. It's Carl and Mindy. And um, uh, they, they retired six years ago with $4.3 million saved. Uh, and so uh, they focused on doing several things, flipping real estate. Uh, they socked away a bunch of money. They still have a bunch of assets and blah, 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 blah. But they're not living in a way that they would like to. And uh, so your thoughts on this, George, because, I mean, this is there's another story. We'll get to this in a second. But, I mean, this doesn't always work out for people. It sounds great, but yeah. then you work and you skip out on so much life then you're then you're living life on your terms, except except maybe you aren't. Well, like you mentioned, there is some crossover with our principles and the fire movement principles, which is live on less than you make, increase your income, invest and save the difference, be on a budget, spend wisely. Well, these people have taken that to an extreme that is very unhealthy. Mm -hmm. And so the idea here is, hey, Ken, what if in our 30s we could have $3 million and just live off of that and never have to work a day again? Here's the problem with that. You could live another 60 years. So now you're trying to penny pinch to make this millions of dollars last 60 years while going, uh, what are we filling our time with other than worrying about money? Yeah. So the idea is to stop worrying about money, and yet here they are worrying about money because of a scarcity mentality. So we believe there's a balance there. And Ken, of course, is always preaching that we were created to contribute, mm -hmm. that working right. is actually good for us. And I'm in the boat of, uh, you know, enjoy your life. And so if you have to live this scarcity mindset life to make it work so that you can retire from working for the man, it was a bad plan to begin with. That's right. And I think retirement, and this may be an unpopular opinion, but I'll put it out there. I don't think retirement um, is what it's cracked up to be if your whole goal is just to not work, as opposed to how do you want to live? Like, it, it's not about not working, but that's for a lot of people what retirement is. I just don't want to work. Well, it should be about so much more than that. And I think that, uh, the well, I don't think, I know the data uh, plays out that when people stop working for enjoyment and they're not doing something productive, and I'm not talking just hobbies, uh, that your overall health suffers. So this idea that I'm just going to, I'm going to save and live uh, no enjoyment just so I never have to work again, it's never going to play out well for people. In fact, uh, and then financially it doesn't either. Sam Dogan, who was one of the you know forefathers of this movement, retired th 11 years ago with $3 million. And uh, big news, it's in this article that came out probably a couple months ago, I covered on my show, that now he's so worried about being able to pay for the cost of his kids who are little, they're toddlers. And he's projecting that tuition, which has steadily gone up uh, over the you know last decade, that's going to be so much that he's not going to have any money to live off of. And so now he's coming back for one reason only, to cover college education. And again, there's no joy. There's no, as Thomas Jefferson wrote, the pursuit of happiness here. 
It's just that scarcity mindset. Well, and he says, I started doing some research and learned that happiness is mostly something that comes from you. It comes from the inside, not an external factor. Ah. So he figured this out after some research, Ken, what Thomas Jefferson uh, there you go. knew all along. So here's what people long for in retirement is freedom. I think you should continue to work. You've asked me this before. I'm not going to retire. I'm I not have gonna, asked Ken I'm off not, air. I said, what's your, what's your long-term game plan? I mean, you're nowhere close. You look great. You look <laughs> like you. a spry 41. I appreciate that. Uh, but- but I, I'm, am I going to work less? Sure. Will I keep the hours and, and the intensity? Uh, probably not, but, but not far off because I, there'll be something as I get older where I can work and contribute and see purpose and, and experience meaning, and that's good for my overall health. And, uh, well, and people have a negative important. view of work, Ken. That's the problem. Well, that's is they're, the they're doing something they hate. Well, that's right. Uh, they're not doing the right kind of work. They're not doing it at the right place. They're, they're working treated, for the wrong leaders. That's right. They're not treated right. That's a very good point there. So, There's a lot of factors that play into this yeah. where you're going, hey, what if we could find you a place that you actually enjoy being at with right. people you respect, with good leadership, right. and work that you're passionate about? Yeah. I, I, I remember meeting, uh, when we lived in Atlanta, I got to tell you this story about Martha. So Martha was 76. And she worked in the local Chick-fil-A that we went to with our kids, uh, right off of Peachtree Industrial Boulevard, right there in Suwannee, Georgia. All right. And I asked her one time, she was so kind and so sweet. It was like, she was like everybody's grandma. And I asked her, I was like, why do you do this? She goes, because I just love being here with people and serving and working in a way that just makes people feel comfortable. And I know that I'm making a difference. She was always walking around every table. Can I get you a refill? Can I turn in your children's book for the ice cream? You know, these are very important things that you're going to be dealing with, not to Oh, I know all future. about that. I don't have kids yet, and I still do that. <laughs> you always go get the ice cream. That's my hack. Uh, so, so it's, it's, and she just said, I just love showing up and being a part of this team. That's the idea. And she did it part-time. You know, not because she had to, because she wanted well, to. Well, you've asked this question, Ken. What would you do if money was, was not a factor? Yeah. That gets you dreaming. Well, and then usually whatever that thing is, it involves making money. It you does. can make good money doing that. It thing. does. And here's the other thing. In retirement, when if you've lived like no one else, so later you can live and give like no one else as we teach, you you won't need the money, but you, you'll you need the engagement. You go do that. And then you've got extra money. You've got that extra spending money. You don't even, it's just, what do you do with it? You could give it away. Mm. You do a lot of fun things. And I think that that's really important. So there's a lot of themes here. Uh, generosity being one generosity of them. Generosity is a huge piece. That's the key to joy, not consuming and trying yeah. to... Uh, achieve some level of wealth. The other one is contentment. Mm. And the other one is moderation. Going, hey, maybe it's not good for us to spend everything we make and be broke. Maybe it's not good for us to live on so little that we live in a scarcity mentality on the fritz all the time. Maybe we should just be on a budget and assign some line items for things like vacations Mm. and things like eating out. You can do that once you're out of debt. And let's have a plan to retire with some dignity to where we can do some really cool things and take the kids on amazing vacations and so I think our plan has a really nice balanced approach. It really does. Uh, but, you know, for a lot of these folks, they're going to look back and go, I don't have enough money, and I don't remember doing anything in my 30s other than working. Which, by the way, are some of your best years, you know, health-wise, physically, 30s, 40s, career-wise. And so to squander that by trying to get to this goal so quickly, right. I think hurts people mentally, financially, yeah, I agree. emotionally, all of it. You make a good point. You know, your 30s is, is still a wonderful decade of testing. I'm in it. And discovering. I'm living it. And seeing who you are and really preparing for that second half of your life if you're blessed to have that.